A storm is brewing in New York City, but this is a storm that the Democrats may end up regretting more than they could possibly imagine. We're going to check out the scene in front of the Manhattan's DA's office, and we're going to see the new strategy that's being pushed to end this Democrat prosecutorial insanity once and for all. Both Trump supporters and detractors are gathering at the Manhattan's DA's office in New York City as President Trump faces arraignment today at 2.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And let's just say the MAGA crowd did not disappoint. Marjorie Taylor Greene made an appearance this after New York City's pathetic excuse of a mayor basically threatened her with arrest. Here's what she had to say to that. Also to the Mayor Adams. As you can see, I'm standing here peacefully protesting, but you called me out by name while you allow crime in your streets and you send your henchmen down here to commit assault against people by making loud noises, assault against police officers who are doing their jobs, trying to keep them in civil, trying to prevent violence. Democrats are the party of violence. They're the party that's, that's okay. enabled no, and funded no, and cheered for violent riots that's all through 2020. And they allowed cities to be burned, $2 billion worth of damage. That's the Democrat Party. But we're the party of the We're the party that wants to protect the lives of the unborn. unborn. We're the party of male and female, two genders only. We're the party of secure borders. We're the party that will bring peace to the world like President Trump did, not World War III like Joe Biden is doing. We're the party of economic prosperity. We're the party where every American can live the American dream. But the Democrats are the communists. Democrats are the communists. They are destroying America. Take a picture, don't push. Destroying freedom. Democrats are the ones that have nothing to campaign for because they are failures and they're proving it today. I want to thank the New York City Young Republicans for organizing this protest. I want to thank the press who are here today to cover this protest and allow me to speak and, and spread my word. And I would like to thank patriotic Trump supporters who are here today. So there you have it. The Democrats are the party of violence. And again, she said it, $2 billion in damages from race riots, all the while CNN was lecturing us on whoever said protests were supposed to be peaceful. And this, of course, like we talked about on our first video today, the Democrats are doing this knowing full well that Republicans are not going to respond in kind. The, the Democrats are going kamikaze because they know that Republicans love their country too much. We revere our nation's customs, cultures, and traditions too much to respond in kind to the get Democrats. They know that we know that if we pulled what they pull, our nation will perish. So they're holding us hostage by our fidelity to the nation. Jack Posobiec's in Manhattan, and he responded to something like this. Here's what he had to say. morning because Joe Biden and the Democrats and the media are terrified of the people of this country. They're terrified of free Americans. They're terrified of the voters. They're terrified of people having a voice and that's why they're trying to put a gag order on President Donald John Trump. Have you heard that a gag order? Well you know what I say to Alvin Bragg and his gag order? Okay. 
motorcade the same way we're about to see a motorcade here just in a few moments. That's the funeral procession of our republic. But I'll tell you something right now. I'll tell you something right now. We will rebuild. We will restore. And America will be reborn. Mark my words. America will be reborn. You cannot defeat the American people. You cannot defeat the American spirit. And you will never silence the United States of America. They can gag Donald Trump, but they can't gag all of us. Now, of course, he's talking about the potential for a gag order placed on President Trump, which would, in effect, prevent him from talking about this case in any way, shape or form during an election cycle, a presidential election. It's beyond insane. And I think it's why Jack likened the Trump motorcade approaching the Manhattan DA's office to a funeral procession. It's the funeral procession of our republic. He, like Tucker Carlson, many others, are forthrightly coming out and saying that our republic died today. The rule of law, the impartial rule of law that alone protects our nation from descending into the abyss of retributive politics, where basically tribal warfare takes over, that rule of law has died. And there's really no way around this. When you take the undeniable flimsiness of this case, a case that was passed over by the Justice Department, passed over by a prior Manhattan DA, and even passed over by William Bragg himself originally, you take the flimsiness of this case and you prosecute it against the backdrop of New York's skyrocketing crime rates because of the same DA refuses to prosecute criminals, or the fact that we now have ironclad evidence that Joe Biden and family receive hidden funds from a Chinese energy company, let alone the multiple felonies that both Bill and Hillary Clinton committed. You put that all together and you get a picture of a bona fide weaponization of the law, characteristic of the worst of banana republics. But Posobiec also said that this funeral is going to be followed by a resurrection, a restoration, a rebirth of our nation in the midst of the ashes. So is that true? And if so, how? Well, that's exactly what we're going to find out. But first, gang, a huge thanks to all of you for your wonderful feedback and ideas for my new guidebook about how to escape the Great Reset. Thousands of you reached out sharing what you want to see addressed in this guidebook. And I believe this book is now obviously more necessary now than ever before. My team and I are reading through all your comments, emails, and messages, and it's clear that patriots like you all over the world are rejecting globalism in full force and have found creative ways to live out a life of faith, family, and freedom apart from our ruling elite's agendas. I'm in the final stages of drafting this guidebook, and I know you and your family will greatly benefit From these resources. I'm also including a list of the news sites I personally get my news from so that you can feel optimistic every day with the truth. Now, if you want a copy of this guidebook, just comment below or email me at steve at turleytalks.com and I'll update you soon about when it'll be released. And I can't wait for it. The key to what Jack Posobiec and Marjorie Taylor Greene appear committed to is that we have to collectively act as if the republic that we love has just been temporarily suspended. And that's not mere rhetoric. We have to act as if the republic that we love has been temporarily suspended because that will unleash a retaliation by the Republican right so massive that it basically takes out the whole of the Democratic leadership. Now, this is exactly what the New York Post is arguing today via a column by Paul Sperry. Now, again, I want to stress the significance of this. The New York Post hates Donald Trump because the Post is owned by never Trumper Rupert Murdoch. So the Post is no fan of Trump. And yet they recognize that the left is in the process of completely destroying any semblance of a unique American republic in these tactics. So this is what I predicted would happen. Even people who don't like Trump are going to rally to his cause because they don't like those who are trying to destroy our country a whole lot more. They may dislike Trump, but they despise and detest those who are trying to ruin our nation. And so what this fellow Paul Sperry is noting here 
is that as a matter of political survival, the Republican Party, particularly at the level of conservative DAs and deep red districts, they're going to have to unleash a torrent of persecutions against Democrats deliberately to settle political scores. Now, I mean, you know, think about what they have here. The Clinton Foundation, the corrupt Clinton Foundation, they're headquartered in Little Rock, Arkansas, where the county DA is a hardcore Republican. What if he started getting creative with tax fraud law when it came to the Clinton Foundation? You know, you think we could see some indictments coming out of that? What if he started looking into where the Clintons got their money from to build their Clinton presidential library? You think we might see some indictments coming of that? Or how about Joe Biden's brother, Jim? He's gotten into such hot water in deep red states of Tennessee and Florida for allegedly defrauding health care companies. And gang, this is all just t- the tip of the iceberg. What about Nancy Pelosi's blatantly obvious insider trading? I wonder if a red state DA would be interested in investigating that. The point that the New York Post is making here is that while in the past local authorities always were dissuaded from pursuing indictments against national politicians, Bragg and the Democrats have just removed that taboo. Now it's open season and red states are going to, as a matter of survival in a post-Republic America, they are going to have, they inevitably they're going to have to go after Democrat national politicians everywhere. That's how it seems to me, ultimately, this whole thing is going to finally come crashing down. Once red states rise up and go scorched earth, we may indeed end up seeing the implosion of the Democratic Party. And that's when we'll see our nation reborn. So that's the task before us, to hold our leaders accountable, particularly our red state DAs, to begin taking out virtually every single national Democrat politician that they can take out. When that happens, this game is over, and red states will be the winner take all. As always, make sure to smack this bell and subscribe button, and you'll definitely want to check out my latest video on why the Democrats are really panicking over Trump. It's going to give you a lot of hope through all this. It's very important, so make sure to click on the link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.